various avenues are available to a person for making investment of his savings. One of such avenue is investment in the capital market. Whenever an entrepreneur decides to raise money directly from the public by issue of a prospectus, this is called operation in the primary market because in such a case the company raises money directly from the investors by inviting applications through a prospectus. Various formalities are completed for listing of the shares and thereafter the shares can be dealt on the stock exchange through the members of the stock exchange. This operation of buying and selling on the stock exchange through the members of the stock exchange is called a secondary market operation. The stock exchange is an institution which is recognized by the Ministry of Finance, Government of India and no other institution can run as a stock exchange unless it has got a recognition. In the same way, there are members of the stock exchange who are appointed after complying with necessary formalities. No person is allowed to act as a member or as a broker of the stock exchange unless he has complied with all the requirements. It is easier and safe for any person to deal with the member of a stock exchange because the member is under the discipline and has to follow the code of conduct of the stock exchanges. The stock exchange provides liquidity to the investment of the investors by providing facility for trading on the floor where he can buy or sell his securities. If he has any problem of payment or delivery of shares with any broker, stock exchange authorities take action against such people. Hello, is that Mr. Kapoor? This is Mr. Ramesh Anand, an established stock broker with considerable experience behind him. JK Synthetic is doing very well. Yeah, rate is around 84, 85. Well, I think it's a good buy. Okay, so we buy 100 shares for you. Right? Okay. Well, I've noted down. We'll do it. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Hello. Pleased to meet you. I'm Umesh Avasti. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to invest some of my savings in shares. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I was wondering if you could guide me. Approximately how much amount you want to invest? Uh, approximately 25,000 rupees. Could you please tell me what kind of investments you are wanting to make? Something which makes you rich overnight or something in which you want to invest for a little long term and which gives you a steady return and the risk is comparatively low? No, 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 no. I want a good rate of return. Okay. Well, I think in that case I should suggest to you something which is a professionally management company. This is Larson and Tubro. That's their last report. It's one of the best contracting companies in India. And as far as the shareholders are concerned, I think they have given them the best kind of return. Its current price is at about 150, which uh, I think is very reasonable and I think it's a very good investment. There is another annual report of Gwalior Rayon. Well, it's a Birla company in the synthetic yarn industry. In the current price, they are also offering two shares for every four shares held as bonus shares. That means if you buy today, you get those two shares also free. Oh, I see. Well, the rates of the two companies are 150 for Larson Tubro, and this is going at about 100 rupees nowadays. Um, well, uh, all right. Would you like me to buy 100 shares each of the two? Yes. I think that would be reasonable within your budget also. Yeah. But, well, I'll just get to the floor. Pandey, how's the floor? Good, good. 
Okay, could you please give me LNT and Golirion prices? LNT is 149 and Golir is 99 and a half. Okay, can you buy 100 shares of each at best market? Fine, thanks, and get back soon. Well, your job will be done. And, uh, well, can you give me some margin or advance money? Uh, for how much? Approximately 10,000 will do sure. for time. Certainly. Thanks. my shares. See, your shares will be delivered after the next settlement date. Settlement date? What is the settlement date? See, it's like this, that there is such hectic trading during the week that it's not possible to give or take deliveries on a daily basis. Therefore, a day is fixed on a periodic basis when all these deliveries are exchanged between brokers and then finally given to the clients. Yes. Now, in case of Delhi Stock Exchange, Every Saturday is a settlement day when there is no trading and only the shares traded during the week are exchanged between brokers and finally given to the clients. So as far as you are concerned, your shares will be available within about 8 to 10 days. That is after the coming Saturday. Meanwhile, there is hectic activity on the floor. Anand's message is being delivered to his authorized clerk who will negotiate the dealings with his counterparts on the floor of the exchange. A very characteristic aspect of the stock exchange is the noise level. In a market which is going up sharply, or which is coming down sharply. The noise levels are very high because what is happening is that the brokers' assistants at all times are trying to get over each other's shoulders to buy heavily or to sell heavily. That's why they shout at the top of their voice. In a market which is standing relatively steady, the noise level is virtually coming down because there is no uh, hurry to unload or to purchase. In fact, this noise level sort of uh, depicts the heartbeat of the market. Another very important aspect is the communication of business. Firstly, it's the communication of business to the broker's offices. Now, during the restricted two or two and a half hours trading, which is there every day, the business comes in to the broker's offices on telephones. Virtually, the telephones are buzzing every second. Once the business is communicated to the broker's office, it is passed on to the trading hall through intercoms, or even certain very unorthodox methods are employed. Like you may find a person banging on the glass panel of his window or ringing an electric bell or throwing a piece of or scrap of paper from the viewer's gallery. Or if the noise level is very high and your broker is very far away or you want to signal to him something, it's not virtually possible to hear each other, therefore you use symbols. I'd quote you some examples. If one is trying to purchase food specialities, now he would say, this means what is the rate of food speciality? Or otherwise, if he is trying to say, now you would guess what this means, well, I'll tell you. This means Hindustan Motors. Now, the broker, on the other hand, has to get back with the rate. Now, he is saying, this means the rate is 24 rupees and 75 paisa. This means four quarters and three of them means 75 paisa or, you know, three quarters. Well, so these kind of things only a person who goes very often would understand 
and uh, you know you get used to it. <laughs> Business on the exchange is executed in a very tricky manner. When a person is making a call for a particular script and the other broker or his assistant responds, neither of them would disclose what is to be done in the script, whether the person who is called is trying to buy or to sell or what the other person is also trying to do. So in response to the call for a share, the other person would simply quote two rates. One would be his bid and the other would be his offer. That means bid is the price at which he is willing to purchase and say, uh, offer is the price at which he is willing to sell. If the bid or the offer is acceptable to the person who originally called out, the transaction could be negotiated. You would see that a lot of arms and hands are used. This normally when you see means someone is trying to buy and when he's doing this way he's trying to sell trading hours are restricted from 12 to 2 30 and the entry of the members is also regulated through certain passes as soon as it is 12 the members start going inside and at 12 there is a bell immediately after the bell the authorized Buyer and sellers authorize the assistants of the brokers and the brokers will start shouting having their respective bids. In the stock exchange when trading goes on, every member is required to get his rates listed in the register being maintained by the employees of the stock exchange and the employees immediately will prepare a slip, that slip is being given to the PTI PTI will feed those rates to the stock scan and those rates will appear on the board so that the investors and the others who are seeing from the gallery they may come to know as to what rate of a particular script is appearing on the Delhi Stock Exchange. In the Stock Exchange ring itself there are two divisions, normally there are two divisions. On one side trading in specified shares goes on, on the other side the trading in non-specified shares goes on. If somebody is interested in, in cash shares, he should go to the other side. If somebody is interested in specified shares, he should have his bids and buying call on the other side. <laughs> As and when there is 2.30, again there will be a bell. After that, trading will come to an end and the members will normally come out of the trading hall. Some of them will stay there to finalize their books of account. Mr. Anand, I got you a contract note for a transaction that day. But I find that the rates mentioned here are different from the rates in that day's newspaper. Why is that so? I see it's like this that on the stock exchange there are various quotations for each script on a particular day. The prices move within a certain range up or down. Moreover, in the newspaper, what you would find is only the closing quotation of the day. But it's not necessary that that would be the only quotation that day. So hence that minor difference. Well, in addition, there is a normal brokerage charges also. Oh, I see. Now I understand. Yeah. Here you are with your share certificates and duly signed transfer deeds signed by the sellers. Should I get them transferred immediately? It depends whether you wish to hold them for a year or longer or whether you want to hold them for a certain smaller amount of time. If you wish to hold them for a year or so, that is a long-term investment, then it is better you send them for transfer right away. That will help you in obtaining all the benefits which the company gives to the shareholders during this period. It may be by way of dividends or the company may issue some bonus shares well, or anything else. However, in case you are wanting to sell them in a short period of about four to five months, 
then it's better that you have a liquidity in your hand so that whenever you need the money or whenever the rate is good, then you can immediately sell them. What is a blank transfer? And for how long can I keep these shares without transferring them? See, blank transfer basically means when you can keep your shares blank without getting them transferred or without filling the transfer deeds, you can keep them with you for some time. Now, this can be kept for only a certain period of time, not, not indefinitely. The rule governing this is as per the Companies Act provisions, which says that there are two relevant dates. One is the date which is given on the top of the transfer deed which is attached with the share certificate. And the other date is the date when company closes their books of account for dividend purposes, which is normally once in a year. So you have to take the latter of the two dates, that is the date which is coming after the delivery is valid to be kept as blank till that date. Hello. Oh yes, it's Mr. Kedriwa. How are you? Yeah, the market is still bullish. Yeah, I would suggest that whatever transactions you have purchased, you may hold on to those. We can postpone the sales. We can pay badla charges. Okay, bye. Uh, Mr. Anand, in your conversation just now, you used in some terms such as uh, badla and bullish market. Could you please explain these? You see, uh, market can be either going up in general, all the scripts are showing a higher quotation, or the market can be going down. Where the markets are generally going up and people are purchasing shares so as to book profits at higher rates, it's called a bullish market. So an investor buys at low prices and waits for the prices to come up before he starts selling and books his profits. So this is a bull market. See, you would have seen a bull. Normally when it goes and hits something, it lifts it up. So that's how the psychology has been, or the term has been called a bullish market. Now coming to a bearish market. In a bearish market, the price index of all shares is falling gradually. Overall, there is a decline in the prices and the stock of investments in the hands of investors is going down. This term basically, I think, is coming from a beer, that a beer would just come and, you know, envelop a person and push him down. So this is a bearish market. This is how the two terms have come up. Badla is a term which is used in connection with the specified list of shares. Now, specified list is that list of shares in which one can do a transaction of purchase or sale without giving or taking delivery of the shares. That means that you can purchase a share and you need not make the payment for the same. The payment will be made on your behalf by a financer and he will finance your transaction for a certain specified period which may be 15 days or so, which is normally 15 days. Now, if you want to carry your transaction for another 15 days after that, then you have to pay a certain interest cost to that financer for financing the transaction for the next period also. And this financing cost, which is payable at the end of every period for which the transaction is carried over, is called Badla. What are specified and non-specified shares? According to stock exchange regulations, the total securities which are being traded can be classified into two categories. One is called specified shares or A group securities. Another one is called non-specified shares or B group securities. The distinction between these two types of securities as per the classification given by the very stock exchange lies in the process of its settlement. The specified securities are the securities which are very actively traded on the stock exchange and in which the facility of carry forward of securities from one settlement to the other settlement exists. And after that settlement, they are settled finally, whereas in case of cash scrapes 
or you can see non specified shares the payment and delivery is to be made within just two days and there is no such facility of carry over from one settlement to another settlement. Early in the morning most of the investors they just turn over the pages of the newspapers and see the quotations of major stock exchanges in particular Bombay, Calcutta, Madras and Ahmedabad. There is always some risk in share investment. This risk can however be minimized by taking into account the various factors or elements such as your judgment, your knowledge, your anticipation, reliable information, announcements by the government, your study of the financial data, consultations with experts, all these things if you keep in view then the risk of element, though of course is always there, can be minimized. If these things are not taken care of, then naturally your investments are always subject to greater risk. As you know that hundreds and thousands of scripts are being traded on the floor of the stock exchange every day. And this happens almost in all the 15 stock exchanges in the country. In some of the stock exchanges there are large number of scripts, in smaller stock exchanges there are uh, less number of scripts are being traded. But the point is how we laymen can come to know as to whether the market is going up or down. It is not possible by taking into account the movement or fluctuations in the prices of a particular script. Therefore, we have devised a particular method with the help of which you can just find out at the end of the day as to whether the market is going up or down. What is that method? That method in fact is called the computation of sensitive index of the equity prices on a particular stock exchange. And that index is being computed by many of the stock exchanges, say in Delhi it is called DS index, in Bombay it is called BS index, in Madras it is being called MS index. These indexes are being computed by every stock exchange in the country. This computation of sensitive index helps a particular investor or the stock exchange authorities or anyone whosoever is interested in the securities market to know as to whether the prices are going up or below or in totality it tells us as to whether the trend of the stock market is upward or downward by taking into account the trend upward or downward a particular man can take a decision as to whether it is a proper time for him to come to the stock market for making certain investments or for buying or selling the securities as per his own requirements. The movement in the prices can be gauged or judged with the help of the performance of particular company or with the help of the performance of a particular industry group or by the policy statements or the decisions or the concessions which are being announced by the government from time to time. And not only that, sometimes some statements appear in the leading financial newspapers and if a particular statement, even if it is given in advance before taking of the policy decisions by the government still, it is going to affect the stock market and will have some wide fluctuations or normal fluctuations in that particular strip depending upon the particular decision of the government. <laughs> Stock exchanges provide facility to the corporate sector for raising resources of money through the capital market for meeting the requirements of completing their projects or financing the expansion, modernization or diversification schemes. It also helps the investors by providing avenues for making investment in the capital market, particularly equity where better returns can be expected. The stock exchanges also look after the interest of the investors by providing liquidity in the form of buying and selling of their securities so that they can in cash in the capital in stock exchange as and when they need money and also invest their surplus money as and when they want.
the stock exchanges also protect the interest of investors if there are any defaults on part of the brokers because brokers are under the discipline of the stock exchange and for any wrong action disciplinary action can be taken against the brokers the stock exchange provides facility to the investors in the form of trading on the floor of the stock exchange where they can sell their securities and thereby encash the money or they can invest their surplus funds in such securities where they feel that they can get better return capital market in the form of more capital generation helps the society as a whole in the form of providing more facilities goods and services and ultimately it is not only the investor or the corporate sector which is benefited but it benefits the society as a whole in the form of more and better goods services and facilities